So one of the issues that we have here with the legs is that they're so thin and I believe that they're just a little bit too big but I should be able to push it down a little bit but the issue is going to be when you mold it you try to create a mold out of this one of the things that I do plan is just removing the legs for the mold making process and if I cast them in polyurethane and just like one solid piece I think I should be able to mold them another option is just to make this part in plaster and then take the legs and sculpt them in steel even though it's not going to be perfect another option is to put the legs folded down but since I have them up this is the uh, pose that I want it's going to look a little bit awkward now if I try and bring it down so I kind of want to keep the natural position that the bird is in so what's happening now is that I'm just trying to create a little bit of the details and for the details one of the things that I have that's extremely handy if you look at my tools here I have just some guitar wire. The guitar wire has got some serrated edges and in a way this creates texture when you are sculpting. So if I'm looking at the feathers I am sculpting the direction of the feathers but I'm trying not to create the entire shape of the feathers just a little bit of an indication of how the feathers go. So if the feathers are moving this direction I'll make sure that the tool is nice and clean and then I will make it go the direction that I want for the feathers. And oftentimes when I am doing that I'll take another tool and just indicate a little bit of a deeper feather. That way I think it looks a little bit nicer but if you go on top again it tends to get lost because you want to keep that detail. So the idea is that you take maybe a flat tool and you kind of change it up because you don't want to you want to create a little a variety of the line by doing that but this is an excellent tool and you really have to uh, figure out the direction that the feathers are going and always keep it really clean because if it's dirty it's not going to create the direction of the feather There are extremely difficult parts, so all of these feathers, they're thick, but there's so many things that are happening. The middle part is actually going in deeper than the outer part, and the direction of the feathers goes this way, but you do have to remove quite a bit here and make it hollow here. And there are a lot of shapes here, especially to this outer. Uh, right feather because everything's coiled up but you can indicate a little bit of what's happening without going overboard with the detail when you look at um, a lot of sculptures especially the good ones it's not about the detail it's about the general shapes of things that makes it makes it very good and as far as the eye, I'm kind of debating if I should scoop out the eyeball or leave it as is. So it could be that in the process of rigor mortis, the, the bird did lose the eye to decay. That's the first thing that happens. The eyeball kind of disappears because of decay. Or I can leave it on suggesting that the bird just died recently. And that might be the case. I'm okay doing both ways here. It's an extremely difficult piece and I didn't realize that it was going to be this difficult while I was sculpting. One of the issues that I always run into is that I try and do something in the beginning it's much easier I have like all of these ideas and as I move progress it's it gets harder and harder to finish something it gets harder to create a finished piece a lot of times I feel that if I left it at a unfinished state it would look extremely good another thing that I'll say about the 
the um, claws is that I am using wire and this is copper wire that you would get for an electrical for your house and it's extremely malleable it's also fragile so the thing is yeah I couldn't really sculpt this without some wire in here because it's too fragile it's too thin and it's a wonder that birds can actually support themselves with just these tiny little claws but and there are one two three up top claws and it's a little bit hard to see because they have them all together and i have mine a little bit spread out and my claws are a little bit bigger so everything is kind of thick throughout because i need it for the mold making process instead of um, trying to make it as thin as I see it, I'm going to make it just a little bit thicker and that's going to aid the process later on when you're trying to mold it. So one of the things I like to do with this tool, on one side it's got a serrated edge and it's got a round edge so you can use it to push it down. And what I do is I find the direction of the feathers and I just try to indicate a few of them. And I don't want to recreate the entire the feathers in the bird, but this is the way to go about it. Even the geometry, I'll try to create some straight edges because I think it looks a little bit more interesting. And even if you work just on the geometry of things with a straight edge, I think it will, it's going to help create a better artwork. So I tend to push this around quite a bit and it's easy to clean just with your finger, just kind of do that. And it comes out and then you can just go right back at it. But I can still use it for indicating the direction of the feathers. And then if I make one movement I could actually kind of tape down the other side and then another very good thing to have for this one thing I'm using is this and what I have is um, just mineral spirits here or uh, pink tinner actually works and then what I take is the brush a bristle brush and I brush the direction of where a feather might go this is an excellent tool because it diffuses a little bit of the details and it creates it a little bit less sharp. Um, you don't want to just leave a sharp edge in there because everything about this is extremely soft. So, I'll take this. And this is more of a last minute finishing technique. So here I might indicate that a little bit. You could even remove a little bit using this tool and then come over with a brush and brush over what you just did. There is quite a bit of detail in this left wing that's extremely hard to get to, but I think I'm just going to indicate a little bit of the feathers and that's the beauty of these loop tools if they're small enough you can get in here and just remove a little bit without removing too much there are subtle differences between this and that but that's a lot of times it is just because the bird's feathers are so fragile that it's very difficult to sculpt them because you also have to keep in mind that if you're going to make a final piece it can't be too real at least that's not the way I see sculptures as being you don't want something to be so real then what's the point of that like I could just make a mold of the actual bird and I would still have something but the idea that this is a translation from that to this and it it always has a little bit of the personality of the person that's doing it. I think that that's what creates a good piece. A lot of people like to think that 
they look at like Michelangelo's David or Houdon's portraits and they go like, wow, that's realistic. But in reality, all those sculptures are not realistic. They're all idealized and they all look like the artist's hand. They're very different from artist to artist, workshop to workshop, just because the artistic temperament is very different from one person to the other. This is going to be a lot finished and this I wanted to actually have some of these marks and I'll just do maybe a cross hatching on it like this but I want to finish it it's not going to be too perfect I'm going to leave marks here and there and I want it to be in contrast much rougher than you would have your initial piece that way it really stands out and it looks like it'll look much better I believe if you do it that way I do like the idea of having something finished say the head of something and as you move down the body it becomes less finished and that's something that I think a lot of artists have done on purpose and I think it looks great a lot of them are studies but generally this is a technique a lot of people do like because it looks good a lot of times it's hard to get into your sculpture and this is really what the beauty of uh, different tools will will do so it helps to have an abundance of tools but I think I'll make a video eventually showing you how to make decent tools and you can see these are just pieces of wood I wish these were like higher quality wood because I do break these a lot and then I put some wire up on the tip and I put some and I shaped the wire the way I wanted it so I have multiple tools just multiple tools to do different things with different types of wire and it's basically the loops loop tools to sculpt and you know something like this the sticks are virtually free and then you'd get wire and the wire is like four or five dollars and they'll last for like 20 of these tools or, or even more but the wood I would recommend getting some like really nice wood if you can some hardwood this is like just crappy one and then what I like to do at the end of this tool is to shape it in a way a lot of these have different shapes and you can see this one's like tapered and I like the tapering because I can reach into places and move the clay around so this makes it a very good tool and if you were to buy tools like this in sculpture house you'd pay a lot of money this tool for example I bought a sculpture house that's the nice wood that I do like it's got like a great edge to it problem is all the loop sides of these tools and the ferrules tend to break so I never seem to be able to keep it but if you can if you have money sculpture house is a great place to buy tools it just they don't last very long with a lot of wear so as a sculptor a lot of people make their own tools this one is really great because you can like reach around and it's shaped in such a way that you can shape a medium to small sculpture using this instead of uh, relying on other stuff yeah this uh, particular wing is difficult it also helps to have some sort of cloth to wipe down your tools as you're working especially with this sort of clay so what I'll do is I'll take this and I'll try and create some of the shapes of the clay but obviously I can't get my finger inside of the wing there so what I tend to do is like I'll use one of these tools I take a little bit of this clay and if I need to sculpt it I'll take it in with a tool and I'll just kind of push it this is a tedious way of doing it another way of doing it is to is to just completely remove the wing and sculpt the wing apart but 
I like to see the shapes as I'm sculpting the entire shapes.